It's like a free throw shooter, right? I, got, I mean, he's still going to make plays. I'll say this. Tim Beck talked about their, their defense. A lot of disguise, but their ability to make you wait to the last second to know what they're going to do. The penalty gets the Wolfpack a first down, and then Bam Knight. The ball came out late, and Furman has it. it was it ruled down? Travis Blackshear, who's been the money man in the turnover department, has the ball, but I think they're going to rule Knight down by contact. I thought he was down, and the ball came loose after that. We'll take a look at it. Got to say this line. On the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Wow. It's hard to see with the officials there, but I thought for sure that he was down, and then the ball came out. The ball's not in his hands when his knees hit oh, the ground. Hugh Ryan is in there digging the ball out. That's a good play. This Furman team will do a lot of that. They get after the football. I said they forced five turnovers. Travis Blackshear had four of them yeah. through the first two weeks. This is number five in the fumble recovery department. Evan, when you watch them, man, they, they go after the football all the time. I mean, if you're a running back or you're a receiver, you have to have ball security. The keys for them is they said they have to stop the run and then make the quarterback uncomfortable. But when Dwayne Vaughn was talking about what he wanted to do, the defensive coordinator he said, we've got to get to the football. We've got to have some negative plays for them. We've got to make them turn the ball over and, and, and force them into shorter fields so we can score. So 47 seconds into the game, and Dave Doran watches his offense move the ball 25 yards and then cough it up. The give is to Devin Wynn. He is the bell cow for the Paladins, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're going to run the football and be effective with a strong running game. Devin Wynn, a guy that can make plays strong with good balance, good receiver out of the backfield. And then Tyler Baker-Williams, this 3-3-5 three, three, set that Tony Gibson runs. The nickel is a key factor in this ball club. Impact players again brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. On second and ten, Hamp Sisson to throw. And he's got his man near the sideline to move the chains. That's the dynamic tight end, Ryan Miller. Hey, hey man, every time I watch Ryan Miller, I just get more impressed. Hamp Simpson knows where he is. It's corner route. You see how Will Miller always creates space. He's an undersized, more of an H-back guy, but he played quarterback, wide receiver, running back, tight ends. They'll get him in these different situations and seam routes and get effective with it. Sisson gets drilled as he released Isaiah Moore makes him feel it and the pass is incomplete well they don't want him to get comfortable they're going to really come after the linebackers we, we talked about this 335 linebacker flow boom I'm going to hit you now I'm here every play and if it's not me it's going to be my buddy Jalen Scott or Drake Thomas or the nickel so we're going to come at you from a lot of different angles Luke Shiflett has replaced Hamp Sisson here on second and ten after that jarring stick from Moore. Shiflett takes it up the middle. That's his fourth carry of the season. And he picks up three to set up third down and seven. Evan Furman is doing some tackle over stuff too. They've already kind of just tried to, we know they run the option game. NC State said we have to be ready for a lot of different things. So when you go tackle over, it changes the numbers for your defense. But if you're a 3-3-5 defense, you just figure out where we're going to go from a gap integrity responsibility and get there. Sisson back in on third down. The two Devons with him in the backfield, Wynn and Abrams. Sisson flings it deep, and it's out of bounds. And it'll be fourth down. They were trying to go behind that left side of the line of scrimmage where you have the tackle overlook. But NC State with so much pressure, not letting him get comfortable there. So Timmy Bleak Road, who has been a very busy man, he's attempted eight field goals in the first two weeks of the season for the Paladins. Seven of eight, he's made a 51-yarder with a wind at his back. And this is going to be from 48 to try and give Furman the early lead. And that is no good.
to the bait. Right, limit the errors and turnovers. We already saw a turnover. You can't have these mistakes if you want to beat a team like Furman or anybody. The 18th all-time meeting, Furman leads it, dating back to 1902. Not quite the South's oldest rivalry. Virginia Carolina played in 1892, but 10 years after that, the Paladins and the Wolfpack met for the first time. And they played 84 and 85. North Carolina State did not want to schedule the folks from Greenville and Purple for about 35 years. Yeah, they said, let's leave that one alone for a while. Played again 2017, a 49-16 win for NC State. That was Clay Hendricks' first season. They were 0-2 when they arrived to Carter-Finley Stadium that night. They're 2-0 tonight as Bam Knight takes the football out to the 37-yard line for a gain of six. We'll see Knight in person run a lot, and they, they don't mind running behind either side of, the, side of this line of scrimmage. This offensive line is really strong and gives them some creases to hold, run through. Well, Bam, 163 yards against the Bulls 16 days ago, but just 31 yards on the ground against the Bulldogs. And stood up well by Daywan Wilkins right there. He was waiting on his guard and tackle combination to come, come around. And Daywan Wilkins went to the same high school. He was high school teammates at Southern Nash with Bam Knight. So that had to feel good to get his old bud. Yeah, he wanted to tackle him, right? He, they, we heard about it. They said, hey, I, I want to be in a position where I can make a play on my, my former teammate. Dwayne Vaughn, the defensive coordinator for Furman, told us he, he was asking me all week, Coach, what's the first call going to be? You're going to be sending me at him, right? I got to let him know I'm there. It's third and three. And Larry gets it to Thomas. Out of bounds, out near the 44-yard line to move the chains. It looks much more sh sharp and crisp, this offense does. Get the ball out. You have two blockers out in front of you. Good job of holding up there. Easy right there, 86, with the key block to create Thomas. They had some uncharacteristic drops last week. This week, they have to secure the football and make plays on the outside. Turned it over. The Bam Knight fumble on the first series. A missed 48-yard field goal for Furman's Timmy Bleak Row, the reason why we're still scoreless. And Leary, bootleg to the left, connects with Amezi. Trying to stiff arm Travis Blackshear out of the way, and Blackshear wasn't having any of it. Amezi is a key factor in this offense, and Blackshear is a tough, tough kid. They move to the to your right and then come back to the left. That gets Leary outside, and Amezi is trying to <laughs> just physic, physically impose his will, but Blackshear is saying, okay, all right, yeah, that's what you want to do? Okay, we can do this all night. One of the talking points of the first couple weeks for Furman is Travis Blackshear is a corner who embraces contact and likes to tackle, which corners sometimes well, don't like Well, he was like a receiver that. kind of running back guy out of high school, and he just came in, and they loved his, his uh, ball hawking skills. On second down, play action, and Leary overthrows his man in the slot, C.J. Riley. Yeah, C.J. Riley set up perfectly. Leary with a little bit too much mustard on that football. That would have been a first down for him. Coaches talk about this every week, but Dave Doran insisting, look, it's, it's all about us, whether we're playing Furman or we're playing Clemson, whoever, it's about us. We can't play bad football. Yeah. And the key for them is to keep the drives alive, keep Furman's defense on the field so they can get back to a comfort level on the offensive side. Third down and three. And it's Knight hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, and he's still going. Zonovan Knight taken down inside the 10. DeMarcus Clay saved the touchdown after a 42-yard burst on third down. Well, when you work behind Big 79, Icky and all the other guys come up and you think you have them tackled. There was a tackle in the backfield that should have happened for TFL. But when Knight knows he keeps his feet moving, very powerful, and he's just going to run at you. If you're going to come and look him up, he's going to look you up. And that was a really good, strong run. Guys staying on their blocks as well. First and goal, Knight finds a crease to the goal line. He's short. 
It'll be second down from the one for the pack. Yeah, he's looking up guys this week. I think Mississippi State gave him some looks that they couldn't run the football effectively against the run blitzing package. But now there's some holes. Seven C's behind his guard center area. And what I like about him is the one cut, get up the field and go. He doesn't waste time. NC State just entered our CPI security red zone, and it's Pam Knight up the middle and into the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. I give Knight a lot of credit on this drive, but that offensive line, the last two plays just created some holes for him that were just nice to watch. Yeah, they move people yeah. up front, and Knight deserves credit for breaking that tackle in the backfield. On third down, he went for 42, and it could have been minus two. Well, and the key is they kept their blocks. He could have been tackled for a loss, but he kept those feet moving. Now Christopher Dunn back out there, and he is money with the point afters. That's his 130th consecutive made point after try. Second rushing score of the season for Zonovan Knight. NC State went for 69 yards. 56 of those yards were Zonovan Knight on oh, the ground. I, I talked about this offensive line throwing people around. There were opportunities to tackle him in the backfield. But he was able to run the football effectively. And then you can see when he wants to score, whether it's Icky, Dylan McMahon, Grant Gibson, Zavala, or McKay, they all played a role. And the tight end crew was critical on that last drive. Five-star drive summary brought to you by Yellowwood. Three minutes, 54 seconds. The Wolfpack take it to the house. Big play, of course, was the 42-yard run by Knight on third down and three. And it'll be a touchback, so here comes Hamp Sisson. The Furman Sports Information Director tells me no relation to former Georgia Tech kicker New England Patriots kicker Scott Sisson. I was wondering that, but no, no relation. <laughs> At least that's what we've been told. Ham Sisson, as Ashley mentioned in the open, 362 yards passing in Furman's opener. It's the second most passing yards in a game in the illustrious history of Furman football. The one thing about it, George Quarles, the heck of a run by yeah. Devin Wynn there <laughs> carrying the pile. Oh, Devin Wynn is one of those guys that can just, he will get behind the line and make some things happen too. But with Hamp system, wants him to just calm himself, make sure, you know, if the throw is there, anticipate and make it go. Interior offensive line, not as big as uh, North Carolina State, but they fire off the football well. You'll see that throughout the game. Sisson to win out of the backfield and not much there. Good pursuit on the sideline there defensively by Baker Williams. Yeah, they're going to try to leak him out and get the ball out there. Shoe screen catch. Great job of this is what he does well. Catch the ball out of the backfield. The problem is it slows him down just enough for the nickel to get over there and make a play. You'll see that nickel back all over the field. He can be the safety. He can be in the box. He can do a lot of different things. And that'll create some challenges for Hamp Sisson. Got to be versatile to be a NC State nickel. Manageable down and distance here for Furman, third and three. And the give to Devin Abrams, and he is stacked up. Maybe got one before he was driven into the backfield. You're not going to get past big Corey Durden and C.J. Clark and Daniel Joseph, those down three. Durden just hauls it in. Look at big 48 pulling. He had a lineman on him, and then he just says, okay, ah, you know, I'm transferring from Florida State. I'm going to show you guys how we do it right here at NC State now. The place kicker, Timmy Bleak Road, is also the punter for the Paladins. And Thayer Thomas standing back at his own 28-yard line. Angled kick toward the Wolfpack bench, and it will one hop out of bounds right around the 39-yard line. Wolfpack up 7-0, getting the football back when we come back to Raleigh. Of course, Clay Hendricks was recruited to be a guard on the Furman offensive line in 1982. 
when Dick Sheridan was the coach in Greenville. Yeah, I mean, it's it, Dick Sheridan, you know, you beat a, a team like NC State twice, then you come come here, and they had three and nine seasons, three seasons in a row, and then he gets them to eight and three, and they just have a magical run while he was here. And, uh, and you can see why he's in the College Football Hall of Fame. Led the Wolfpack to the Peach Bowl in 1986 when Clay Hendricks was a graduate assistant. So they came in with some credibility because we had whooped them pretty good in 85, 42 to 20 that year. Devin Leary back to work with a 7 0 lead. And a first down out to midfield on the completion for Keon Lassane. That was a missile from Leary. Yeah, he threw the ball a long distance. He got there quickly, and Lassane still had some opportunity to run with the football. You're going to see a lot of the receivers involved. They throw the ball around. Whoever's open is going to get it. They just need to be prepared for it. First catch of the year for Lassane. Only had three catches in 2020, the abbreviated season. Leary throws it after looking like he was going to run with it, and Thomas will take it into the red zone. This, this was a heads up play by Leary, knowing that they come with pressure, and then the guys that are after him, that he knows if he can get to that next level, and right before he gets to the line of scrimmage, if he runs there, they'll come up, and that's going to open up for Thomas. Really nice heads-up play. And he, he certainly sold the yeah. run. He had plenty of room in the middle of the field, but then saw Thomas shake free. 33-yard gain. Tied for 10th in the ACC red zone efficiency early. Obviously, no one wants to talk about a jump pass in these parts. <laughs> Pressure in the backfield, and Ricky Person Jr. is not getting away from Big 95, Parker Stokes. Yeah, that was a good work by Stokes, just coming down the line and making sure he stays there. And then he's running with this lineman. And you see Big 95 just says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going until I get there. Hanging on to the jersey for dear life. <laughs> A loss of three on Person's first touch. So back to the 20 yard line and the give goes to Knight. And he cuts back nicely, but a better job hanging on by the linebacker Braden Gilby. And it'll be third and long. Well, the impressive part is just look at the number of hats that get to the ball. Stop it right there. You can see guys flying to the football. All of them just kind of coming at you from different angles, and it's about six or seven Furman defenders. When they see that ball get outside, it looks clear initially, and then all of a sudden there's just room to run, but they get there, and they get there fast and furious. I like the way they were playing on that defensive play. A quick look at Dwayne Vaughn, the youthful, energetic defensive coordinator for the Paladins. It's third down. Leary steps up, throws short across the middle. Person will be stopped right around the 14, where it'll be fourth down and seven. And here comes the field goal team. They know speed-wise they may not be able to run with NC State, but what you want to do is if one guy catches, if we can get four or five hats to the ball and keep them out in front, that's what will stop. And Furman did a nice job on those last two defensive plays of showing you that. Hats to the football, making sure that they rally and secure the tackle. 32 yarder here for Christopher Dunn Jr. And that's perfect to put the pack in front 10 0. A fumble on the first possession, but then two straight scoring drives engineered by Leary Knight in this Wolfpack offense. Yeah, they wanted to make sure when they got in the red zone this week they scored points. Last week, you know, very first one, you, you don't come away with points. And it kind of set the tempo for the day. Today, that first fumble, probably reminiscent of, oh, here we are. But then they, they made sure the next drive score, this drive, come away with three points. And that puts Clay Hendricks' team in an interesting position here because they fully expected to be competitive in this game. It was 21-13 four years ago, late in the first half. Two years ago, 
back-to-back -back weeks, Furman was very close to knocking off an FBS opponent. They lost by six at Georgia State. They lost by seven at Virginia Tech. Well, I, I think the other thing is when you get beat by a team like Mississippi State, you know you have clumps in the next week. You've got to have your guys fired up to play. <laughs> seen some great energy from this Wolfpack sideline yeah. early in the game. They really have. The fans have been into it, and the, the, everyone is into it today. And you know what? It's a complete 180 from what we saw in the second half last week in Starkville. When the body language, look, they were down 24 to 3. Peyton Wilson, who so many have called the best player on their team, had gotten hurt. And they just didn't have the mojo. They didn't have good body language in the second half last week. Let's go down to Ashley on the sidelines. All right, guys, a lot of guys are getting an extra year because of COVID, that eligibility, so they're six years. But what about a seventh year? Tyrone Riley, that's right. This is his seventh year. Before he graduates, he's actually going to be 25 years old. Now, he battled a couple injuries, and that's why it started like that. He joined the pack in 2015, redshirted. 2016, he got hurt, missed some time there. 2018, underwent sold shoulder surgery, but did end up playing. 2019, another injury, came back strong. So I'm thinking they're going to need to make a 30 for 30 on this guy because like I said before his final season here at NC State he's going to be 25 years old so they have those super seniors they're usually the fifth year guys so I don't know what are we calling this guy any ideas well the crazy thing is over the course of the next couple years we're going to see like yeah. eighth year seniors and I mean seeing red shirt graduate students has been a little <laughs> jarring in game notes it's it's now a matter of how many years of eligibility they have left yeah. and how old they are because they're a freshman who have played a couple seasons who are still freshmen yeah and i think that's the other thing we talked about a little bit with you know uh Furman looking at some guys that want to graduate because they don't have certain graduate degrees and programs so some of their guys will kind of graduate out of the program so to speak well after sisson went for four and win for three on the second down play. It's third down, three yards to go. Furman unsuccessful in their first two third down tries in the ball game. Capacity crowd here at Carter Finley tonight. It was a sellout. And they're making noise on third down and Sisson's pass is incomplete and almost intercepted by Jalen Scott. Yeah, that never looked comfortable from the beginning. Juan Bell. And Dominique Roberto were in the same area, but Hamp Simpson, Sisson, excuse me, throws over there, but not to his guy. <laughs> that was not a very wisely thrown ball. And Jalen Scott, we talked about it, a linebacker that can be all over the place, almost dug that out like a baseball player. NC State giving a lot of attention to Ryan Miller. He knows that that's the guy Sisson wants to go to in those situations. Low line drive kick from Bleak Road, and here comes Thomas with a blocker. Across midfield and a shoestring tackle right around the 41 yard line. So Thomas has the Wolf Pack in position, but first, a quick word from Works. Works Landroid Robotic Lawn Mower. Available at mylandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. After a 33 yard punt. A 24-yard return, and they officially spotted at the 42-yard line of the Paladins. Devin Leary so far, Buck, 5 of 7, 62 yards. Overthrew one man to his left, but other than that, has looked solid and a few good decisions as well. Quick throw this time, Devin Carter. His first catch of the night, and he takes it for four yards to the 38. That's the one guy we talked about, too, needing a big game. Devin Carter, 6'3", 215, the physical body. Amizi gets a lot of attention, but big 88, I think they're expecting things out of him as well. Remember, past year's coaches said we recruited Devin Carter to be the next big receiver here in Raleigh. I think he has all the tools. Think of this Raleigh team, I mean, this North Carolina State team. They've consistently had big physical receivers who can make plays. On second down, slow mesh point, Wake Forest-esque, and Person takes it down to the 36-yard line. It'll be third down and four. You have your left guard and your left tackle pulling, and Person gets behind them. 
But uh, again, this this Furman defense, they play pretty well, and they'll stay behind those blocks and not let you cut where you want to. And if you have big Icky <laughs> Equinu, you got to watch him because he's just a mean, nasty guy. Number 79. Chandler Zavala to his right. The left guard is a fascinating story too. Transfer from Fairmont State. On third down, perhaps the final play, the quarter, and the conversion. C.J. Riley has the first down for NC State. They pick up seven on the final play of the first. Devin Leary's throwing some darts. That ball is getting out there. He's got some first quarter, eight yards per play, and that average will go up as Thomas takes it inside the 10. Another dart from Devin Leary. Yeah, rush three, drop eight, and they're able to get that dig route between the linebackers and the safeties. Really nice job of play fake, hold those linebackers up, and then you can see a dart again by Devin Leary to Thomas. Playing with some confidence tonight. Coming back from the tough lower leg foot injury that knocked him out of the season midway through last year. Ricky Person Jr. Trying to move the pile down to the four yard line. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, this is where they want to get you. In the red zone now come off the football with that big offensive line that's oversized against a Furman team that's you know, played well, but just not as big and as rugged in the trenches. You don't think we're going to see the jump pass here, do you? I uh, know we without. I know unequivocally you will not see that jump pass. Oh, you got the the scoop from Tim Beck, did you? Oh yes. Leary's going to throw, and he kind of jumped when he threw it. It's a touchdown for NC State. Dylan Parham, the tight end, only one reception on the year, but it's nice to see. Coach Beck, when we talked about how your tight end is going to factor, well, here's one play. They've been great blockers. You can see one coming underneath. And then Kevin Leary just throwing the ball with some effectiveness. Parham wanted to make sure he held on to that. First career touchdown catch for Dylan Parham playing his 35th game in an NC State jersey here tonight. Replacing the great tight end, Kerry Angeline, in that spot. Strong start to the second quarter for North Carolina State. The sixth year tight end Dylan Parra calls in Leary's fourth touchdown pass of the year and it's 17 and on the first play of this drive for the Paladins as they trail 17 to nothing. Clay Hendricks had really been proud of his defense the last two weeks. They shut out Tennessee Tech on the road last week. But NC State sharp offensively to start this ball game tonight. You got an angry NC State team after the way they played last week, especially on offense, and they're showing it tonight. Channeling that anger well. Sisson throwing it deep, and that ball is incomplete. Heck of an effort from Joshua Harris, but the freshman could not hang on. Yeah, they're going to have to do this and really challenge this, this, this NC State defense. Their eat picks, Pitts was there on the defense, but you know the transfer out of West Virginia, Marshall's played a lot of good football. Joshua Harris, I thought, had a chance at getting that ball as a true freshman out of Newman, Georgia. They're going to you're going to see some shots, and they have to throw that against this defense and get them back on their heels. Furman only has one first down so far. It was on their first possession of the game. On third and eight, pressure coming from the backside, and Sisson got drilled. And the Furman punter has been very busy, and he'll be coming on the field again here. Yeah, they're going to bring pressure almost every time. And Drake Thomas on the backside, the linebacker flows. You know, I can remember talking to Tony Gibson. He said, look, I don't run quarters, meaning I don't put four guys deep in quarter coverage because I want to be able to get after you. And that's what that showed right there. The Thomas brothers have been impactful so far. And they are back out there, and he'll handle it on a couple hops from his own 32. One firm and cover guy took out another. And Thomas scampers just a few yards out to the 34-yard line after the 39-yard punt from Bleak Road. I'm sure their backyard football games were epic. 
Well, Dad could ball too now. Oh, yeah. Dad Trevor, captain for the Marshall Thundering Herd in yeah. the early 90s. They got some football bloodlines. Devin Leary so far, maybe the most impressive thing about his 9 for 11 for 99 yards and a score, seven different receivers have caught his nine balls. He was 4-4 on that last drive for 37 yards, so the rhythm and understanding where to go with the football is clearly happening tonight for Devin Leary. Looking to throw again, and not in the same mindset as his receiver, but he gets bailed out by the flag. Intended for Julian Gray, who is celebrating his birthday tonight. Pass interference, defense number 22. 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a situation where Julian Gray is there. He wasn't going to catch that no. ball, but it doesn't matter. No. That, that was pass interference. You got to give him a chance to at least attempt the ball, and that, that was just way too early by Ivan Yates. Yates, the only new starter on the Furman defense this fall. Furman played seven games in the spring, part of the Southern Conference's spring of 2021-2020 season. The FCS had a little bit different situation. Quick slip to Anthony Smith, the eighth different Wolfpack receiver to catch a pass in the first half tonight. And Smith, with his first catch of the year, picks up six. Tim Beck has to be happy with how his offense is progressing. I mean, that was the one thing in talking to him this week, that they just didn't feel like they did the things that they needed to do. They look sharp. They look crisp. The ball is getting out quickly. And you can see every time Devin Leary has a chance to throw the football somewhere, there's a receiver there that's going to make a play. Tim Beck, his second year as the coordinator for the Wolfpack offense. Spent time in Texas, Ohio State, Nebraska in the past. Another good throw and catch. Nine straight completions now for Devin Leary. Hit Smith again there, and it's another first down. Well, and they're getting the ball out quick. I mean, play fake is one thing, but when they move and those guys are in position, they catch the football and they have a chance to run after the catch. And you're seeing a lot more of that tonight as opposed to drops or catch and get tackled right away. From the 40. And Knight lost a yard. It was good defensive effort and pursuit right there by Furman. We've seen so many passes that have been completed, some runs that have happened against them, and now that time, that was just a real good defensive effort. Bryce Stanfield, 97 in the mix there. Not a bad 10 yards per pop clip so far for Knight, even with that no gainer. Coming into today's game, 8.1 yards per run. Not too shabby. Leary had his throw rejected by Parker Stokes, and it's ruled an incomplete pass. It took an awful long time because initially you were thinking, okay, what did they call? <laughs> but that was a really good rush and get in there and not let Leary throw. And that's, that's as clean as a Rudy Gobert <laughs> squat in the NBA. Hey, and he's flash. Parker Stokes, each time he's come in, he's made a tackle for a loss. That play there is huge for this defense. Now, he looks like he hurt himself on it. I was thinking, yeah. when, when you're throwing a yeah. ball like that, and there's the full contact the other well, way. And, and Devin Leary's lucky from a quarterback perspective, right. he doesn't get his hand jammed up that way. Watching that replay, I, I thought, well, I'm surprised Leary's okay. And it turns out Stokes took the worst of it. That ball deflected off the hands of Braden Gilby and incomplete. That was good defense there. They had under and over coverage. Leary comes back late to this throw. And that's just a nice effort right there by Braden Gilby of getting his hand in the mix. See, that's the, the third read there. He comes back to it late, trying to get it to Devin Carter. Gilby can't get the interception, but he's able to just knock that ball away. Good defense on the last two or three plays by that Furman defense of not letting NC State get that momentum and get going into the red zone. Hunter Trenton Gill to kick for the first time tonight. A high end over end boot that Dewan Bell fair catches 
at his own eight over eight thousand dollars to purchase a thousand meals for needy families in his hometown of Hillsboro. But he bought these meals from different restaurants to help supply them with business as well. And he is at it again this year. He just raised twelve thousand dollars to buy playground equipment for his former elementary school. He says. Everyone on the team gets involved from the coaching staff to the athletic department. And his big thing is he just wants a place for the children to go to be active and feel safe. So really great thing that he's able to do for his community. Great stuff, actually. That's what we call a professional segue right there and a really good story on Trenton Gill. And uh, the Paladins going nowhere on first down against this NC State defensive front. Yeah, this defensive front, you know, after playing against a team like Mississippi State who really wanted to throw the football, shut down the run fairly well last week, is doing it again this week. By the way, the Raleigh Flyers beat the New York Empire, the defending champions, 1916 in the AUDL championship game last Saturday in D.C. Great defense again. Devon Betty in there for the stop. And they've shown this all year, even when we saw South Florida not able to run the football. Mississippi State wants to throw it a little more, but they did try to force the run. This North Wolfpack defense seems to really understand and grasp Tony Gibson's defensive philosophy. Last ultimate mention, I promise. There was one NC State alum on the Raleigh Flyers, Trevor Lynch, proud Wolfpack product, bringing home a championship. Well, you got to just tell me how you score, because I love Frisbee. I mean, we used to do it all the time, but I don't know how you're scoring. I wanted to play with you down in the field, but that leg is still recovering from that surgery you had earlier this week. But playing through the pain, or at least talking through the pain, Charles Arbuckle up here in the booth. And on third down, that pass broken up nicely by Chris Ingram. Chris Ingram was like Velcro to Josh Harris. Yeah, There's it was. No separation there. And I thought Chris Ingram was the receiver as opposed to Josh Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of those things that's a frustration for your quarterback. But they're playing a team that's dialed in and understands, hey, look, we got a big game next week. But for 60 minutes, we're going to take care of what we have to right here. Fourth consecutive three and out for the Foreman offense. And a deep punt, but Thomas gives a little shimmy and skedaddles his way out near midfield. A 50-yard punt, and Thomas brings it back nine. <laughs> NC State feeling good. Devin Le Leary in the Wolfpack offense goes back to work, and Bam Knight breaks through, makes Hugh Ryan miss. And into the secondary goes Bam Knight. Blackshear finally brings him down after a gain of 28. Yeah, it just looks like every time you have him bottled up in the backfield and all of a sudden, boom, it, it's just going to open up. Offensive line comes off really strong and effectively, but what he does is he stays and he presses, and then when he sees any opening, he takes it. The all-time leading rusher at Southern Nash High School, Leary to throw, and another laser beam of a spiral into the chest of Emeka Amezi. Figure we call his name quite a bit tonight. The ball has gone to a lot of different weapons. Amezi is always in the playbook to catch a, catch a pass. Senior out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. Chris Toodle in the game, an H-back on the left side of the line. He's a blocker for Bam. Hayden Richards, the redshirt freshman, part of the Furman group to bring him down right inside the tent. You know, the impressive thing when you watch him, Evan, is his patience. You know, a lot of times running backs want to want to go, and Bam just seems to wait and pick a spot. Person does the same thing. They understand this offensive line is going to eventually open up a hole for him. They've just got to be patient, and when it happens, you see the one cut stick the foot in the ground and go. Couple yards on the ground up the middle there. We'll set up third down. Wolfpack can get a first down at the three yard line. And that carry takes Bam Knight over 100 yards here in the first half. You know, we always talk about the running back, but you got to give credit uh, just on that play. Grant Gibson with a nice block. His mother is Sonya Grant. His grandfather is Harvey Grant. Again, excuse me. I mean, they, a long history of folks that have done a lot of great things, and we'll talk about that more 
within the flow of the game. Grant playing his 40th career game in an NC State jersey tonight. Leary trying to make something happen with his feet. Leary into the end zone. Touchdown, Devin Leary. Seven yard scamper for the Wolfpack QB. Initially, it looked like it may go for you know, a short game. But Leary says, okay, I'm out here in the open. He's got a personal protector out in front of him, right? <laughs> He's got Knight blocking for him, and he says, okay, if, if lowers he the shoulders yeah, a little bit. Go. You know, I'm not usually the running guy, but I guess I'll have to do that right here. Really nice job of getting behind his running back, who's usually the guy running for or getting behind blocks. And Knight does a nice job of setting him up for a touchdown. So it's his first touchdown right of the season. I got a hunch these day Wolfpack has had the right decisions in his mind tonight. Yeah, he has. Every time he has had an open receiver, it seems to get the ball right there to him. He also knows his clock is ticking perfectly and getting it out with the authority. And then when he needs to run the football, he'll put it down and, hey, bam, you blocking for me, man? Okay, I got to lower the shoulder. I'm getting it for six. Seven-yard touchdown run for Leary. The New Jersey native who's got one touchdown in the air, another on the ground. He's our Hardy's star to watch. You can see the numbers so far. And he spread the ball around well. A lot of different guys getting the football, and I'm sure that was a point of contention. Eight different receivers with receptions. And I, I think that's the, the key part for this offense. If they're going to run and play effectively, they want to make sure guys are getting it all over the field. So for the folks who joined us maybe five, ten minutes late, watching another game, flipping over, NC State fumbled on their opening yeah. possession today. Furman took over at midfield, immediately marched inside the 30-yard line, or I should say right near the 30-yard line, stopped the 31, 48-yard field goal was wide right, and Furman doesn't have a first down since. It's been all wolf pack since that missed field goal early in the first. We talked about the defense for the Wolfpack being dominant, and I think they're showing you what that's like. They're showing you what it means to really come in here and play, and they, they need this. They need to have it. And they're going to be playing next week a Clemson, Clemson team that struggled today against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech currently driving down by eight. Final minute, that game was delayed by lightning for an extended period. Look at those disparities. 11 to 1 first downs, 240 to 37. And again, this is a Furman team that had outgained its opponents by about 400 yards combined in their first two games. A win over North Carolina A&T was pretty competitive against the Duke team that beat Northwestern today in Durham. Yeah, beat them pretty decisively, too. Wildcats got back in it late, but a 30 to 23 win for Dave Cutcliffe on a on a day when the ACC struggled. That's a, a big victory for the league and for the Blue Devils. It's funny because I was, we were looking at it earlier and they just had such a big lead. The Wildcats came storming back and then Duke just kind of finally at the end held them off. Eight yard gain for Devin Wynn on first down. Well, they want to get Ryan Miller 82 the ball. That we know that North Carolina State knows it as well. Sisson buried in the backfield. Isaiah Moore got there first, and then Corey Durden helped finish him off. Plays like that, if you're going to run the option against this team, they have to be quick hitting. You can't take your time. Look, he's slow developing. These linebackers sense it out, and Isaiah Moore has just gotten better and better every week. Came in with 13 tackles. He's all over the field all the time making plays. Second straight season wearing number one for Dave Doran's defense. Furman lost a few on second down, so it's third and five. They're 0 for 5 on third down so far. Sisson incomplete. That play looked off from the start. It just didn't look like it had a chance, and Sisson was running into where the defense was coming at him. Thought he was going to throw to the underneath receiver, Devin Wynn. Tries to go to the outside, but just doesn't look comfortable. And, and it's partially because this Wolfpack defense is making him uncomfortable. Another punt for Timmy Bleak Road. 
And a bouncer that Thomas will just forget about. Furman downs it at the Wolfpack 23-yard line. 5.22 remaining in the half as we check in with Ashley down on the sidelines. Ash? I'm on NC State side, and they are all very excited. The score getting away from Furman right now. But stick around for halftime because we have highlights, we have stats, we have a driven with Dave Dorn. So you're going to learn a little bit more about him, and then I'm going to interview both coaches as well. So a lot coming your way for halftime, guys. Looking forward to it, Ashley. Ashley's first college football broadcast yeah. tonight. You, she's acting like a veteran down there. Would have never known. Great to have you with us, Ashley Shamady. With Charles Arbuckle, Evan Leppler, our entire crew. David Leary and the Wolfpack O. Back to work, up by 24, plenty of time, and he floats it to the sidelines, and his receiver paid the price. Cam Brinson put the hit on Porter Rooks. Slow developing play, it takes a long time because you're on the other hash, that's a long throw. But they gave him a lot of time. The problem was it gets there and it's way over his head and the, and the defensive back's head. Devin Leary. He and his brother Donovan share the record in New Jersey for most passing yards by a tandem of brothers. The guy's records they broke, Phil Sims's two sons, Chris and Matt Sims. Donovan going to be a freshman at Illinois next year, committed to Brett Bielema and the Illini. Porter Rooks catches this one, and it will be third down and six. Rooks is able to catch it, and Anthony Smith out, out front blocking 85, allowed him to pick up some more yards, so made it a little bit shorter of a third down. This is where... NC State has really done a nice job for most of the game on third down and converting those. Well, they had the fumble on the first possession, and Dave Doran had been harping all week. We need to eliminate our mental mistakes. I want to see 11 guys doing what the play caller asked them to do as hard as they can do it. And that ball thrown hard and complete to the perimeter. It's Chris Toodle making his third grab of the season, his first of the night. And that's another NC State first down. Yeah, that was a nice, effective play. And again, the ball in position where the receiver can catch it, turn up the field, get some positive yards. Toodle, the ninth different Wolfpack receiver to catch a pass in just the first half. And Leary zips it to Riley. He's met by an army of Paladin tacklers. If you saw the shoulders of Leary, he kind of helps hold the defenders by just kind of that quick movement, and then that he's able to get the ball to the outside. Subtle things that quarterbacks have to do in order for them to open guys up or throw guys open. Right there, you see it again. Now he's coming back to the, all the way to the other side where his check down is. Went through his progressions nicely, and Ricky Person Jr. shook a tackler before... Jeremiah Jackson and the yeah. pack bring him They'll down. Watch it right here, right away. He's going to show you with his shoulder and then come back. But his feet have to go, too. If his feet don't go, the ball won't. He does a nice job of getting all of those things in line. Tim Beck, the quarterback's coach, probably has worked with him a lot on let's make sure we're doing all the mechanics from the upper half all the way down to the lower half. And, of course, that doesn't work if John Garrison's offensive line doesn't keep him clean. Oh, yeah. The offensive line has just done, done a really nice job of not allowing this Furman defense that wants to blitz you and come at you from different angles to get to him. Good protection again, and it's Rooks making moves after the catch. Down to the Furman 43-yard line before Gilby finally brings him down. Quarterback that gets comfortable and is able to do this. He knows right here, I know where my guy is. I come to him, and the ball is zipped right to that four. Rooks catches it, keeps his feet, keeps running. Again, we're gonna, we've are gonna we seen multiple, multiple receivers make plays. Part of it is that offensive line protecting, but part of it is Devin Leary knowing in his head, 10 different receivers now with catches. Leary deep down the right sideline. Anthony Smith makes the catch, and then he lost it reaching for the end zone, but it's ruled a touchdown. The call on the field is six for NC State. 42-yard score for Smith. 
if it stands. They have been really going at the underneath routes and doing different things, and now they want to come back and get you a gash play. And Devin Leary gets the ball there, a little bit short. Smith goes up with it. They call it a touchdown by him getting across the end line. And I think you could make yeah. the argument that his reaching the ball is a football move. Yeah. And thus he is now a runner and no longer a receiver making the catch. Now they're going to take a look at it to see if they called it a touchdown on the field. By the way, uh, the Clemson defense just stopped Georgia Tech at the two yard line on fourth and goal with 15 seconds left. Clemson leading 14 to six. So the Tigers are going to be two and one with back to back wins since the loss to Georgia but not looking like the Tigers that we're used to seeing they have really made it tough on themselves and just they haven't just pulled away from people consistently this year like you expected this Clemson team to be wins over South Carolina State yeah. and Georgia Tech certainly NC State will be their toughest test yet and this place will be rocking as we take a look at Anthony Smith. I like the call by the well, officials the, there. The one thing too, they also made look and see was his knee down before he got in. That point. was the other thing. Watch, watch this. The catch comes up, then is that knee down before he's able to extend? That's the part that I'm not sure. I mean, he, he did an excellent job of contorting his body, but on this replay, it almost looks like the knee goes down. I mean, he just does an excellent job right there. The knee then. Is he extended enough? And if that's the case, the knee goes down. That's where the ball will be. I think you're right, Buck. Yeah. See right here, boom, he's down. He's got possession. Yeah. The ball is down. It'll be first to goal from the one. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. No. Nope. It's a touchdown. Yep. How about that? Uh, well, I, I guess his body is long enough to knee hit and ball extend. It just looked like one of those things, bam, bam. But great job for him. Uh, great effort by the young freshman. Well, he'll remember that play for the rest of his life. His second career touchdown. I beg your pardon. Yeah, he got one against UNC last year. Number two for Anthony Smith, his first of the season. And the point after makes it 31 to nothing. Let's check in with Ashley down on the sidelines. Well, guys, clearly the defense not the only threatening part of this NC State team. The offensive line, one of the strongest, as you can see with what we just saw there. This pancake block is what they really use as a motivational tactic. The O-line hands out bottles of syrup. As you can see right here, I have one here. Bottles of syrup for when they do these pancake blocks. And this is just a great way to motivate them and get them to be tough out there during these games. And they actually display all these bottles in their meeting room. And Icky it leads the way. He has 102 syrup bottles. He actually had eight in the season opener, but you just saw who did it just then. But it's just a great way for get, to get them to be tough out there and to get those pancake blocks. So look out for more of those and just know that they better love their breakfast because they have a ton of syrup to fill them up more than they could ever possibly want or need but why not yeah I know where to go if I need some syrup for my pancakes <laughs> these guys are the real hey. the real question I have is who on the NC State staff some grad assistant or yeah. some manager has to go and buy the 500 bottles of syrup for the staff to give up for pancake blocks and what if guys say hey I don't really like that syrup I want this kind I'll say hey man this is more for show some, <laughs> some people like butter on their pancakes yeah. <laughs> they like thicker syrup rather than lighter syrup New Hampshire Vermont <laughs> there's a lot of different types of syrup out there Wow well this Furman offense had played well enough the past couple weeks to help Furman go 2-0 Paladins beating North Carolina A&T 29 to 18 and then a 26 nothing shutout win Furman's first shutout since 2004 but Paladins 42 total yards offensively so far tonight through the first 27 and a half minutes Devin Abrams take your pardon Devin Wynn picks up four on first down Clay Hendricks 
began his coaching career here at NC State. Went back to Furman, was part of the national championship team that they had in the late 80s, 1988. FCS Division I AA at the time, national champs. He went up to Air Force for a long time, worked under Troy Calhoun. Coached the offensive line, was the offensive coordinator, and now back at his alma mater leading the Paladins. And they've got high hopes for what they can be this fall. And that's the one thing you have when you're playing a team like North Carolina State or any of the big boys, so to speak. You know you don't have the scholarship numbers. You know you don't have the bodies that they have. You know you, you're undersized in certain areas. But the one thing you want to do is compete. And, and, and I think that's the big thing. Clay Hendricks is a guy that's an offensive line guy. He wants his guys to keep firing off. He wants to get something going on offense just so they can have some positivity out of this. And you can see he's going to talk to them like, look, let's 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 do what we need to do to give our running back some opportunities in our offense and uh, our offensive chance to click. You think Dave Doran and the Wolfpack staff are pretty pleased by what they've seen so far? I think they are, but they're going to coach harder in a win like this. And, and I'll say that whenever you're a coach and you have your team playing well or, or perceived to be well, you still know that there's something that you can get better at. There's things that we, we can't see until you watch film. So they're going to coach them hard this week because they know you can't have some of these mistakes if we're going to beat Clemson. Third and four, and the pass almost intercepted off Abrams' fingertips. And Jalen Scott was the closest Wolfpack defender. Best opportunity for him on this screen. You can see it set up perfectly. Devin Abrams getting out. He's got all his linemen in front of him, getting him, setting him up for a chance to run down the field, and the ball isn't there. And that's sometimes the book on Hamp Sisson. You know, some of the easy throws he will miss. And I know there was pressure coming, but just get, toss it out there and let Devin Abrams pick up that first down. Bleak Road missed his only field goal attempt. He's been a busy punter. Bayer Thomas. Up the sideline, a flag flies, three of them. All simultaneously, the officials from every angle saw the same thing. We needed all the officials' flags for that one. <laughs> well, it has been a quiet first half it in has. terms of the officials, it which really has been nice. Well, you got two, two clubs that, you know, pretty fundamentally sound. When you watch film, you don't see a lot of air. During the return, personal foul, legal blindside block. Receiving team number 15. 15-yard penalty will be enforced, first down. B both teams seem to play pretty clean from that standpoint, although there were some mistakes with North Carolina State last week that were just so, un you know, just before the snap of the ball even, guys were jumping in a loud environment. I know they wanted to correct that. You can't go back and hit. You can see right there by the 30-yard line, getting pushed from behind. So that cost them 15. Instead of being out of the 40, they're back to the 25, but looking like they're not satisfied with 31-0. Well, they want to keep adding points to it. So Devin Leary back to work. Quick pass to Devin Carter. And you brought up a good point this week, too. Both teams getting a chance. I, I know Furman plays a lot of different folks, but NC State wanting to play a lot of different players as well. Nine different guys have caught a pass in the first half. It's a busy night for Devins. Every play so far, there have been at least two Devins on the field. Leary and Carter for NC State, Wynn and Abrams. And also a couple guys named Josh Harris in this game, one for each side. Leary on second down and four, shoots it deep. And there was a little contact as the ball was coming to the ground, but no flags, and it's incomplete. Yeah, DBs are, are taught to do this. Ivan Yates is going to tug that jersey just enough, especially when Devin Carter tries to turn his stem up. Watch. He's going to grab him enough, but he's the, the official can't see him, and he pulls off quick enough. Devin Carter knows he got pulled. He got pulled. <laughs> he got away with one, Ivan Yates. 
Now you're a tight end. I yeah. imagine you think that should be a flag. Oh, I know it's a flag, but sometimes you can get away with it. The ball is a little overthrown as well, so that might be one of the reasons why the official didn't throw it. But you saw where he was. His vantage point is behind. He's in the receiver's there. He can't quite see what the defensive back is doing. On third down, it's Thomas across the middle as a flag flies. First down yardage, but we will check the yellow. And the umpire throwing that looks in the area of holding usually. NC State's walking that way. Generally, when the umpire throws it, it's a hole, and it's because you, you can see right there, 54. Dylan McMahon. Yeah. What happens is he's out of position. After further to... discussion, there is no foul for an offensive hold. The result of the play is a first down. The game clock will start on my signal. It, hey, it looked like a hold to us, but it wasn't. And that's, I'll say this: usually you're out of position because they're running the game, and then when that guy comes around, all you can do is reach out. Dylan McMahon gets the flag picked up. I don't see that often. No, don't. <laughs> He's happy about it too. Wonder if in the film room they'll be like, "You got away with them there, Dylan." That looked like a hold. <laughs> yeah. That old adage, you can call it on almost every play if you want. Leary zips it down the seam. It's complete. Rooks. Down at the 30. This looks like a totally different offense this week. And just really getting the ball out quickly. And when it does, seam route in the perfect position. 29 yards, they spotted the 31, and another quick completion, and now Dave Doran takes his second timeout. Stopping the clock with 33 seconds left in the half. He's trying to get as, as efficiently as possible all his guys in this first unit opportunities. Now we're going to see in the second half probably a lot more guys playing that uh, we'll, we'll be filling in and some of the backups getting in the game. Let's check in again with Ashley down on the sidelines. Ashley? As a Mecca, MZ in his fifth season with NC State, he battled some injuries in his career. Actually missed all of fall camp with a foot injury. Only had a couple practices before the first game this year, but if you talk to anyone, they'll say he's one of the most resilient and hardworking individuals. He took me through his day-to-day -day schedule, and he just watches hours of film every day. He says there's just always more to learn. But the new receivers coach, Joker Phillips, he told me has really made an impact on him. He said he brought a new perspective, showed him a new side of football, one where he isn't always tense or uptight and stressed and, and always wanting more, but instead just feeling much more relaxed and grateful out there and, and having fun. He says that he's learned to be genuinely happy for his teammates who make a good play. It's just really playing unselfishly, and he said this new perspective has made all the difference for him this year. He's come a long way. Grad student from Waxhaw, North Carolina. A catch in 35 straight games. Thomas! Lost the football as he landed, and a flag comes in, and they rule NC State down at the three, and might we have targeting here? It looks like that's going to be the case. Demarcus Clay with the big hit on Thayer Thomas. Personal foul, targeting defense number seven. That plays under further review. Again, he's finding his receivers in the right area. The Marcus Clay coming there. The shot to Thayer Thomas. Now this could be targeting, but it also could be an incomplete pass. I think you're right on both accounts. So then it'd be a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down NC State, if that is indeed the ruling. Yep. Also be an incomplete pass and they could decide no targeting. Yeah, targeting as when a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle, a legal block, or playing the ball. That rule has been interpreted a lot of different ways and we've seen it called and, and ruled a lot of different ways this year. Bands, any forcible contact, leading with the crown of the helmet or the head or neck area of a defensive, defenseless player. Let's hear Mike Roche. In the review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass and tied in the head, both been confirmed. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, and by rule, number seven has been disqualified. 
So Demarcus Clay's day is done. Veteran, fifth year safety from Atlanta, playing his 45th game as a Paladin. He had picked last week, but he will be a spectator the rest of the night. The penalty, though, gives NC State first down from the 12 yard line. 30 seconds left in the half. Wolfpack with one timeout remaining. Leary to the end zone. Thomas, touchdown! No worse for wear after the targeting penalty the previous play. And Thomas puts NC State in front 37-0. You can see the smash route coming from way up here, which is going to put him on a corner route, and it's going to have an underneath to hold everything. Devin Leary doesn't have to go there till the very end. You can see the underneath receiver, Devin Carter, pulling things down there. Thomas up top to the pylon. Perfect throw by Devin Leary and a nice catch by Thomas. So with that pass, Devin Leary now 259 yards, three passing touchdowns. He also ran for a touchdown. And Christopher Dunn makes it 38-6. They talked about not beating themselves and not playing to anybody's level. <laughs> and I think right now they have come out and just played some really good football. You can see Devin Carter there just holding down the defense. But that one-on-one -on -one coverage is so hard. There Thomas knows I've got a corner route. I see the back of the end zone. I have all that area. If, if Devin Leary puts it there for me, that's going to be six points, and it was. Great call by Tim Beck in that offense. 38 points in the first half. They've only punted once. They turned it over on their first possession, but have scored five touchdowns and a field goal. Well, and I also say after that shot he took before, the play before, still able to come back and make the play. Talk about those <laughs> Thomas kids in the backyard. I am sure there was some vicious hits lay on each other and one going in to made to tell on the other and then the mom and dad saying no go back out there I don't want to hear kids from the neighborhood if you will come play you're going to be in for a dog fight <laughs> Thomas has been a dirt dog was drafted by the Boston Red Sox out of high school played some baseball for NC State as well Bayer Thomas and his brother Drake both captains this week Drake taking over for Peyton Wilson and I got to imagine Peyton Wilson Cyrus Fagan watching from afar we're told Cyrus had surgery yesterday imagine they're enjoying this they'd love to be a part of it obviously but they're satisfied seeing this and let, let the anticipation start for next Saturday Charles you might as well because we all know that's what's happening as they finish this game and continue to ball they're going to start focusing their attention towards that. Wonder if we'll see Devin Leary in the second yep. half or whether Ben Finley or Aaron McLaughlin might get a chance to run the NC State offense. It, it sounded like we would get to see the other quarterbacks. Just an opportunity in a game like this to get some live action. Well, the only bad news at the end of the half here is Drake Thomas is slow to get up on the field for NC State. So that is the only after winning the opening coin toss. So they will get to football here to begin the second half. Paladins, the all-time winningest program in the Southern Conference. This is the 116th season of Furman football. 621 wins. NC State football began. 1892, they've got five fewer wins all time than Furman, although it's looking like it'll be four wins fewer after tonight. Well, one of the big things is NC State's defense and how they will play against the run. You see all of those red jerseys getting to those white and purple guys every single play, and it's just, it's happened all night. Tony Gibson talked about his defense being aggressive and attacking. You can see here, anytime the running back thought he might have had a way to run or place to run, there was no yards anywhere. So the Paladins 
Their first drive last week in Cookville, Tennessee. They went 91 yards in nine plays. Sisson back to work and connects with Joshua Harris, his freshman receiver. I'm surprised we didn't see more of this RPO game. Where you put it in there, glance route on the backside coming. They didn't do a lot of this in the first half. I, I'm sure we'll see some of this where you get that linebacker or defensive back guy or overhang safety out of the mix and able to throw that little short glance on the backside. 13 yard gain on the pass from Andrew Hampton Sisson. He's long been Hamp. And a flag in the backfield as Sisson got drilled. The good news is Drake Thomas is back on the field. The bad news is he may have been called for the penalty. He got there and of course with, with bad intentions. <laughs> <laughs> Personal foul, targeting on the defense and plays under further review. Well, this is significant for NC State with ramifications that extend far beyond tonight. And I don't know. I don't know about that one. You see 32 coming in, takes his head out of the hit. Just really, now the key is, will they say he jumped and leaped towards the, the neck or head area? This is what's been so hard about this penalty. We'll go to break. See the result of the call when we pull it there. Yeah, we thought during the break that it was not going to be a targeting call. He tried to get his head out of there. A good call by the officials. It allows Drake Thomas to stay in the game. And I think that he's a key component for this uh, North Carolina State team. More importantly, to yeah. stay in the first half of next Saturday's exactly. game. <laughs> exactly. Against Dabo Sweeney, DJ Uyunglele, and the Clemson Tigers. What a win for the Louisville Cardinals last night, Buck, at the end. Interception return. That ball loose on the ground. And the right tackle, Pearson Toomey, saves the possession for Furman. Yeah, the play never really looked like it was start the right way. They're going to go the wrong way. And then when they do, the pitch is there. But the Kendall Thomas never cleans it, gets it cleanly. The only guy that's able to touch it and really pull it away is Pearson Toomey, the big offensive tackle. Well, one of the things the coaches said to us about Kendall Thomas, we've got to get him caught up to the speed of the game. That's yeah. the speed of the game catching up to him right there. First thing you got to do is secure that football. Freshman out of Round Rock, Texas. One of eight Texans on this Furman team. That ball deflected and intercepted. It's picked by Tyler Baker Williams. And he's got big ideas on the run back before Jacob Johanning brings him down. Hamp Sisson intercepted for the second time this season. And NC State gets the turnover to start the second half. Well, you could tell when that ball, there's a takeaway symbol. But you can tell right away when this ball gets tipped, it's not going to be in a good spot. And that's right there by Isaiah Moore. Isaiah Moore puts his hand in there. <laughs> He's cheering right away because he knows, look at number one, going to come into your screen. Put that hand up and Tyler Baker Williams in coverage is able to secure the ball and make that return. Second career pick for Baker Williams. He picked off the Seminoles last year. He's got the turnover bone. Here in the Wolfpack den, Carter Finley. This place will be rocking next Saturday afternoon. It's Ricky Person Jr. up the middle. Devin Leary is still in the game to begin this third quarter. And look, it's hard for NC State to kind of recalibrate after what happened last week in Starkville, but the reality is everything you want to accomplish is still out in front of you, despite the hype kind of getting stonewalled in Stark Vegas last Saturday. ACC opener next Saturday, and here's a big run. Ricky Person Jr. down the sidelines inside the 10. He showed some speed when he got to the outside. Again, I, I like both of these running backs. And this offensive line comes off and knocks people around. There's one guy to beat. He's able to just go right by Nick Kuzma. And 
make because them can miss and then Brinson saves the touchdown first and goal from the eight after a 27 yard run for person right back to number eight feeding him and he'll take it to the three maybe the two how many times have we seen that with both of these backs where tackle for a loss capability or possibility and they still just make that one person miss and then they're getting tackled 15 20 yards down the field and yeah, they've broken several tackles yeah. tonight both night and person respectively well, Furman has been excellent defensively in their first two games but facing a different animal tonight literally down at the one person landing across the goal line but his knee will spot this one third and goal so much happening on that offensive line before the running back gets there you can see all the things that are happening good blocking guys just locked up on that interior offensive line person just kind of gets his foot caught up can't quite get over the that one body and if he is he's able to just walk in pretty easily I think he might have tripped on the back of Chandler Zavala's foot he's 6'5 he's got long legs that left guard here we go third and goal from the one person scores the touchdown that was old school football right guard center left guard Gibson Zavala McMahon straight off the ball and there was room to run Tyler Baker Williams the key component made that drive happen quickly well, there's a little bit of old school hey you get a touchdown and you get a touchdown and you get a touchdown tonight three different wolf pack with a rushing score three different wolf pack with a receiving score and Christopher Dunn Jr. remains perfect and college football season is in full swing, and it's going to be a very interesting week in it these will. parts. Will. Getting ready for next Saturday afternoon, the Clemson Tigers. Obviously, they've been the standard in this league. Six straight championships for Dabo Sweeney and company, but look, NC State shows some maturity tonight in, yeah. in how they responded to what happened last week. Yeah, and, and you got a Clemson team that looks vulnerable. I mean, you know, that's that's the thing. But looks could sometimes be <laughs> deceiving. <laughs> and I think that's what, you know, Dave Dorn and his staff are going to have to say, look, they're doing it now. Let's finish this game. Take time to celebrate if we're able to hold on and win this ball game. Not that's something you like. see every day here, <laughs> Buck. Yeah. I'm not going to shark around. But, <laughs> but I, I think that's, you talk about being able to, be a team that has that maturity how do you finish is the real key for this team who is the individual that's like I'm not going to bring a beach ball get this I'm going to bring a massive inflatable shark and pop it up in the air it has some meaning but meaning to that person more than <laughs> still going and some guys like I'm just trying to watch the game Luke Shiflett was out there that last play now he's back on the sideline after getting stuffed for no gain Hamp Sisson three for 12 throwing the football so far tonight looking for his tight end Miller but he wasn't open and the pocket collapses quickly yeah the biggest problem for Sisson has also been not only having nowhere to really throw he has one option and then if that option isn't there 82 is who he's looking for you can see he has that initially, but Tyler Baker Williams comes down from that nickel spot, and takes that away. Davin Van and Caden Fordham both there. A couple of talented freshmen who will be important in the depth role for the NC State front. Fordham, a guy I'm excited about. Now, NC State, I think, had visions of redshirting him with Peyton Wilson being in that spot, Jalen Scott, but. Now the screen set up on third down. It's Dominic Roberto 
And he will pick up Furman's third first down of the night. Second time they've had that set up, and that the first time they couldn't complete it. This time they were able to get that ball out there. Usually it's screen set up. You see the offensive line, and you want to get two of them at least out there. And then they're able to clean it up. And Dominique Roberto with a nice run. Big physical guy out in front. He had a couple blockers, but Evan Jumper and Clark Daniel couldn't really find anybody. <laughs> Roberto just said, get out of my way, fellas. Sisson pump fake and then overshoots his man Zach Peterson on the sideline. Zach Peterson, by the way, his dad Todd, 12 years as a kicker in the NFL. Todd Peterson with the Cardinals, Seahawks, Chiefs, Steelers, Niners, Falcons. Had a good long career. Out of the University of Georgia. Second down from the Furman 39. Again, Furman has their Southern Conference opener next Saturday, 2 p.m. The Mercer Bears will be in Greenville, Paladin Stadium. And nowhere to go here. Vi Jones got there first. Vi Jones also with a lot of NFL blood in his family, his dad Robert. Three Super Bowl rings for the Cowboys. That, the mesh point in the back made it so much easier for Vi to just say, okay, this option coming my way. There was no threat of run because the, the running back was on the wrong side of the quarterback, and he just was able to clean that up pretty, pretty easily. Vi Jones and I have something in common. We each have an Uncle Jeff. His Uncle Jeff was the star quarterback at ECU and with the Bengals, Jeff Blake, as the pressure is coming. And Roberto stopped the 45. My Uncle Jeff is a lovely human being, but he, he did not play in the NFL, as far as I know. Yeah, well, well, I'll tell you, Jeff Blake, watching him play, we played under the preseason at Cincy. And he, you talk about a deep ball. Yeah. I guess that was the We Believe Pirates. In, in, in the East Carolina yeah, before yeah. trickling with the NFL. Oh, I mean, but Jeff Blake could throw a deep ball. And I can just remember seeing those balls like drop out of the air. Carl Pickens, oh, his yeah. top receiver. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were problems. Bleak Road punts again, and Thayer Thomas makes the fair catch at his own 19-yard line. No, I, I think that's the one thing you wanted to see out of a NC State ball club. How would they respond to what happened last week? You know, Florida State didn't play well today. I mean, it's, and then we have now a new quarterback coming in. We, uh, we, we probably felt that was going to happen, and Ben Finley, brother, older brother Ryan Finley. Ryan was a star here, second in NC State history in passing yards, with over 10,000. Ben, a six foot three freshman from Phoenix, threw one ball early in the fourth quarter last week, came in for one snap when Devin Leary's helmet got knocked off early in the fourth. Give is to Jordan Houston. And this is where a lot of guys that don't normally get the same action on game day, even in practice, will get a chance to battle. He's got some fans that are a little bit higher than they should be. <laughs> the, the NFL would have the police out monitoring that pretty closely. Well, the police here tonight is our director, Tom Hewitt, who does not like the <laughs> wardrobe malfunction, as he terms it. Well, I, I'll say this. The other thing with Ben and, and different than Ryan, Ryan was just a different guy. They say Ben is a, he, he, he's a, a, a pistol. Just a lot of energy and yep. just a, a different personality than his brother. Well, he threw a 42-yard touchdown last year against North Carolina after he replaced Bailey Hockman in that game. And they're excited about what Ben Finley can do. Throwing down here, and Finley gets rid of it to his man on the crossing route, but it will be shy of the first down. It's the birthday boy, Julian Gray, the freshman from Charlotte, who becomes the 11th different receiver to catch a pass for NC State tonight. 
And that's one thing you see a lot of Charlotte, Blacksaw. You can see a lot of these kids, and I've watched a lot of them grow up living in Charlotte and now watching them play for NC State. I know Duke has done a nice job. North Carolina has done a really nice job of recruiting in the Charlotte area to get some of these talented kids to stay in the state to come play uh, for these programs. Flag comes in before the snap. Ball start, kicking team number 15, five yard penalty, fourth down. He couldn't hold his water. Same. Knew he was caught, but just couldn't stop the movement that he had going. So five yards further back, Trent, uh, Trent Hill standing right around his own five-yard line. Juan Bell for Furman at his own 38. So Paladins should get some decent field position here. And Bell. Catches it at his 41, makes a move to his right, takes it to the 46, where Isaiah Moore brings him down. Time now to check out who has been worth a watch tonight. Brought to you by Principal Financial. Number 13, Devin Leary, is the guy we've had our eye on. Set the tone early, but with his accuracy, his decisiveness, and his courage taking the ball on the ground for the score. 23 of 29, a perfect night for him, 259 yards. But it always seemed like when he needed to make the right throw to the receiver, they, so many of them, 10 different receivers at one point, that he was able to get the ball to him. And, and that's why this offense has run so efficiently with Devin Lear. Played one drive in the second half, handed the ball off to Ricky Person Jr. five times. Deep ball, Ryan Miller, and it was underthrown and should have been intercepted. Rakeem Ashford, one of the guys entrusted with replacing Cyrus Fagan, very nearly had his first pick. Yeah, it looks like they have an opportunity. System is a little bit short. Ashford has a chance at it, and Chris Ingram is coming. That ball needs to be thrown with a little more air to get to Ryan Miller, who was able to get behind the defense. But a very different day for Sisson. Started the game last week in Cookville, Tennessee. Seven straight completions. It's five of 16 so far tonight. And that run for Dominic Roberto stuffed at the line of scrimmage. No game. Seems like every time these running backs for Furman have gotten the ball, somebody's in there. Kante, Kante was there right there. He put him right on him. And then you have Josh Harris. It, doesn't, it seems like no matter where you get to this line, there's always one defender that's right there. There's no running room for them to break free. Each team has a Josh Harris on the field right now. NC State's nose tackle, 6'4", 350. Redshirt freshman from Roxboro, North Carolina. Furman's wideout, the freshman from Noonan, Georgia. And this is not Harris, this is Ryan DeLuca with a first down completion, and it takes five Wolfpack tacklers to throw DeLuca to the ground. Slightly behind them, and DeLuca does a nice job of plucking that ball out of the air. He runs a nice route, gets open, ball a little bit behind him, but he's able to catch it. <laughs> he's still like, look, let me fight. How many How many guys you want to take on? I got, I, I'm gonna go for six, maybe, maybe seven. The longest play of the day for the Paladins, 17 yards. The defensive coordinators like seeing that five guys swarm into the ball at the end of that play. They love that. They want to see it eliminated right away. Dominic That's Roberto again bouncing off some tacklers. He's a strong runner now. 5'11", 240 out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And that's what Clay Hendricks was talking about. Okay, that blocking inside. And then Roberto just playing it to the defense. For the first time tonight, the Furman Paladins have entered our CPI security red zone. You, heard, you could hear that run up here. A 
Roberto going for 22 on that last play. So the last two plays, the two longest of the game for the Furman offense. And nowhere to go there. Via Jones in the backfield hitting Roberto there. Yeah, as soon as Roberto got the ball, Via Jones, that's what this defense does, though. They'll send guys, and it, it'll guy, a guy will be coming from the backside. He may come from the front side. Tony Gibson does not want to sit still. He wants to make sure, even against the run game, that there are guys coming in this 3-3 three, three stack defense. Sisson floats it to the outside. Noah Henderson with his first touch. Short gain, it'll be third down and nine. Noah Henderson was coming out of the backfield a little bit. They use their wide receivers in different areas, and he's able to leak out. Sisson able to just kind of float that ball out to him. Seventh play of the drive here for the Paladins. Sisson rifles it down the middle, and it's complete to Ryan Miller for the Furman touchdown. Talk about the competitiveness and wanting to finish ball games. Clay Hendricks has to be happy. Ryan Miller, their key weapon here, lines up sp spread out, and he's able to run just a skinny post. Nice throw by Sisson, nice catch. He works on the defense. Nice move at the top of the route. And just able to get in there and get inside. Second touchdown of the year. His first was an 87-yarder two weeks ago. This one goes for 16. And Bleak Road sends the extra point through. So Furman will not be shut out. 45-0 today. USF experienced a 45-0 defeat here a couple weeks ago. But Furman... Gets a touchdown late here in the third. Hope you'll stay with us after the third quarter. The fourth coming up, presented by CPI Security. Buckeye, I know you watched the film. Ryan Miller does not run like the prototypical tight end. He's got some wheels. He really does. Well, I mean, you think about some of the tight ends now that are becoming yes. more like that. They're guys that, um, you know, create matchup problems. He's more of an H-back because his body type. He's only about 220. You know, maybe 230, 35 is the, the most he can put on that frame. But he's very versatile. And some of the big receivers that you see, you like what he does because he's able to run routes like that. He's able to get inside. And he's a willing blocker. Hanging out here with Troy Aikman's UCLA tight end, Charles Arbuckle. Evan Lepler, Ashley Shamady down in the field. And Zonovan Knight will be stopped right around the 20. You surprised to see Knight returning a kickoff in a 45-7 game? Just slightly. Slightly. <laughs> I know they may want to get him some work, but I'd hate to lose him on, on a situation like that. He's been their key return guy. But I would think now that you know, whoever's your backup, maybe that's who you go to to kind of save your key component, your weapon. Well, here comes the freshman out of Paradise Valley High School in Phoenix, Arizona, Ben Finley. It really is amazing. I think over the past few decades, the quarterbacks that NC State has had come through here. Finley rolls out. It's Tootle in the flat. And obviously, you go back to Phil Rivers and Glennon and Russell Wilson and Ben's older brother. And, and there are others, Jacoby Brissett. I mean, they've had a lot of great quarterbacks come through the Murphy Center. Yeah, it's been interesting to watch and, and see how those guys have progressed and gotten really proficient in these offenses, whoever the offensive coordinator is, because there's been different guys along the way, but they've played at such a high level. I can remember watching Russell Wilson before he transferred to Wisconsin, and then Glennon comes in. I mean, it's just been 
really good quarterback play out of the Cincinnati State ball club. And a good burst for Jordan Houston around the right edge. 20 yard gain for Houston before that as long as carry of the season was for four. Good blocking on the edge and Jordan Houston with that speed able to get on the outside. Under a minute to play here in the third. NC State of course is Clemson next Saturday 330 and then the following Saturday Louisiana Tech will be here. Louisiana Tech dropped a heartbreaker today losing basically at the buzzer on a SMU touchdown. 41 39 was the final score. Ball start offense number 53 five yard penalty first down. Those are the ones that hurt you. After this and then after this homestand three straight at home a bye week. And then four of the next five on the road at BC, at Miami, home for Louisville, at Florida State. We can spend some time in the fourth diving into that disaster oh, yeah. if you'd like. <laughs> and then at Wake Forest, who looked really good today under Dave Clawson, improving to three and zero. Oh. has really done a nice job with Wake Forest. So you just look at how they've been able to continually get better. They've recruited well. They've got some, you know, some really key pieces and. I, I told you earlier, generally when they beat Florida State, they, they go on to have pretty successful seasons. We didn't see NC State's best, but we knew the Wolfpack's potential to put this kind of bludgeoning on a lower tier opponent, and the Wolfpack, to their credit, came ready to play. Well, if you go back to the South Florida game versus how they played against Mississippi State, you knew clearly they had it in them. Uh, and, and I think right from the opening start, other than the fumble, they just said, look, we're going to impose our will and play our best football. And you can just kind of tell talking to them this week, uh, the coaching staff, that where they wanted to kind of make this a, a performance that they didn't have to leave any doubt. It's third and 11 after a short three-yard pass to Julian Gray. Finley shooting it deep. Anthony Smith unable to turn his shoulder and make the catch. So they're going to use Anthony Smith a lot in the, in the pass game down the field. He's got potential. No doubt about that. Finley disappointed in himself for missing him there. So here's Trent Gill. NC State's solid punter, all-time leader in punt average, 46 yards per boot throughout his career. And this is a beauty. High spiral, fair caught at the 18. 41 yards on that one with no return. Furman has their conference opener next week too, but NC State looking forward to the Tigers. Some fans have gone back to the tailgates. We still got a, a heck of a crowd here in Raleigh. Ashley Shamady on the sideline in the mix of everything. That's right, Evan, and I'm actually standing next to a coaching legend right to my left, Ruffin McNeil. He, I mean, his career, his resume is, is incredibly long, but here at NC State, he is the special assistance coach. And I was talking to one of the other assistants here on the sideline, and he said, I mean, yes, he's a coaching legend, but he is the lifeblood to this team. That is what this assistant told me. He said staff members will go to his office every day just to become a better person. And I've seen numerous players, every time they get off the field, they go right to Coach McNeil and, and I guess just give him life lessons. I'm about to go talk to him myself and, and see if he can give me any advice, but they say he is just the life coach for every single player on this team. Incredibly respected, obviously the leader of the East Carolina program, 2010 to 2015, and uh, the Pirates, to the confusion of many, jettison him away, but it's been Virginia and Oklahoma's and NC State's gain since then. He's got great lines, but one of his best lines is my eyeballs are sweating. <laughs> and I had to steal that. And I always give him credit for it because he, he just he, he seems to be a, any program he goes to, he makes that program better. Luke Shiflett 
is the quarterback for the Paladins. And he's looking to throw. And he throws it on the money. It's Dewan Bell. And he's out of bounds at the 32 after a 14-yard pass and catch. Really nice throw on the on the run. Bell gets hit here, and it looks like he can just turn around and stay in bounds. <laughs> gets knocked out of bounds, but after a nice 14-yard gain. One of the few pass plays that's really been positive for this Furman ball club. Well, Luke Shiflett is an athlete. He went to Middle Tennessee as a wide receiver. He wanted to play quarterback, came to Furman, getting an opportunity, backing up Camp Sisson. There's another young quarterback behind him. Shiflett is not really the true drop back guy, and then behind him is Chase Wilson. Young, talented player out of Missouri City, my hometown. I know his dad pretty well, and they, they think he's going to be another good player for him down the road because you got all those young freshmen and young, talented guys out of the state of Texas. Jace Wilson's brother, pretty good at basketball, too. Jalen playing in Kansas, 12 points a game as a freshman last year. There's Jace Wilson. Jason's got a lot of talent. That's a look right there. The hair, the, the hat, the headset. And the look. Well, it's always good to see young players. I can remember when he was really, really young. And his dad was telling me about how athletic he was. And but sure enough, he just kind of kept getting better and better and started getting recruited. Some kids are prodigies from the start. Others are more developmental cases. Dave Doran's got a lot of credit for developing players here in Raleigh. And that's what Clay Hendricks obviously is trying to do with his team. You know, it's funny. I, I was thinking about this the other day. College basketball coaches love to spout the adage, we, we want to get old and stay old. I mean, you've heard Mike Gray and Josh Passner say that thousands of times. The pandemic and giving everybody an extra year of eligibility has allowed the majority of college football teams to get older and, and almost stay older in the years ahead. Well, and you also now see the transfer portal, if it's done correctly, you're able to get some guys and pluck a few players the way you want. Get the per people that you want to have. This is NC State's Josh Harris down on the field shaking up. Allowed them to then go out and get, you know, guys that'll fit in certain areas, or if you get an injury at certain points that you need to backfill a position, or a guy leaves thinking he can go to the transfer portal and get in that glut, so to speak, and doesn't have anything, then you can replace him. There's a lot of different things that have happened with college football. Harris, I mean, he, he played four games in 2019 and played four games in 2020, so one of those counted as his redshirt year, and then he got the year of eligibility back, so this is his third year in the program. But he still has four years of eligibility left. He's a redshirt freshman. And it's good to see Josh pop on his feet and walk off the field here. Evan, the one thing I do like to see, too, is seeing those guys graduate and then start grad school. Because a lot of them now are finishing in three, three and a half years. We'll take a timeout. Dave Doran's team on its way to victory. For NC State heads up to Boston College. I remember a couple years ago, I saw NC State up in Boston College. It did not go well for Dave Doran's Wolfpack. Yeah, it's a tough place to play sometimes. Disappointing 2019 season. They certainly bounced back, played well in 2020. Got that early close win over Wake Forest. Obviously got smashed against Virginia Tech in week two, but bounced back, went to Pittsburgh and won. And, and Dave Doran runs a resilient program. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they compete with Clemson. Again, a Tigers team that has not looked quite like the six-time defending champs that we expected to see in the ACC through the first few weeks of the season. You always look at it. At some point, you lose too many guys, and no matter how good your program is, there's a chance where you're going to have a, a fall-off a little bit. And I think that's what we could be seeing with Clemson. It's also day three in the Murphy Center this week as compared to previous week after the 45 nothing win and the answer was like people are pissed. 
There, there's a level of focus that maybe we didn't have last week. We've seen that tonight. He came out with energy and purpose. And despite the early hiccup on the first drive, a bam night fumble, the Wolfpack have been nearly flawless since then. A lot of guys now getting an opportunity like we thought they would yes, in the indeed. second half. Lyndon Cooper, who enrolled in January when he was still just 17 years old, in at the center spot, replacing Grant Gibson. A lot of the O-line reserves out there. Derek Eason as well, 53. Saw Anthony Belton, who transferred here in January from Georgia Military. And a completion to the outside for Jalen Coit. Another young NC State receiver. Is that the 11th or 12th receiver that has caught a pass tonight? That's number 12. We might be encroaching on some kind of Wolfpack record in the 118 years they've been playing. They've gotten the ball to a lot of different people tonight. And I, I mean, I, I think that's what you start to see, too. It started with Devin Leary, and now it's just continued with Ben Finley. Delbert Mims the third. Richard Freshman out of Indianapolis picks up Indianapolis, picks up six. City I spent 12 years in. That's right. Played with the Colts and then spent some time after that. Some really good football that's played up there as well. Pretty good football fans too. Yeah, they do. They did after. Did you know anything about Indy before you got drafted by them? Not a whole lot. I'd gone to the combine and you know I got to know it through the combine and then when I moved there, my wife uh, we went to school together, but she was from Indianapolis and got to know the city really well. What you got, Ashley? I was just going to talk to you about the St. Elmo's restaurant there and if you've had the shrimp cocktail. Yeah. I mean, it is. It will clear you out so quickly. And if anyone hasn't tried it yet, they have to. Have you had it? Yes, I have, Ashley. And you tell people the first time you got to get the shrimp cocktail and I always say get a mouthful of the cocktail sauce. <laughs> because it'll get them, it'll open up everything you have. Spicy, uh, huh? It, yeah, it's got a lot of horseradish and it's really good. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you could review all the good restaurants in India if we had the time. <laughs> and we might get there in our next segment. As NC State continues to pound the rock. Marcus Jones getting a carry there. Well, you could tell when, when it's been pushed down from the, the starters to the backups what we need to do and what we need to accomplish. Everybody that has come in to play for NC State today has been on. Haven't seen a lot of th wasted things. You haven't seen a lot of guys getting penalties. It's just been, hey, look, we're going to come out here and I'm going to get a chance to compete today. Uh, it, might, it might not be as many times as I want to compete during the year, but I want a chance to play in a, in a football game. Finley keeps it and hurries to the Furman sideline. But again, I go back to what I said before. No matter what the score is on the scoreboard, I think this week is going to be still one of those where they're going to go get coached really hard. You generally can coach your team even harder when you win because you'll find things as coaches to say, okay, this is what we didn't do well. We're going to say on air, you did all these things well because you're up 45-7. But the little nuanced things are going to come out in film study and then when you get in those individual meeting rooms to say, okay, we know that Clemson is coming in and we can talk about what we were able to do the last this past weekend. We're going to have to play even better to beat the Tigers who are not going to give up anything. Finley floats that one to the sideline, but it's too far out of bounds. You know, arguably the two scariest moments tonight for the Wolfpack both involved Drake Thomas. When he was down on the field at the end of the first half, turned out he was okay. And then when he got caught for targeting, and it was oh, yeah. like he might not be available next week, but 
Thankfully, targeting has to be confirmed, and they decided no targeting. Drake, you're all right. You and I looked at each other right away and like, ooh. And then when you saw it again on replay, you kind of saw it, thought that they would go away from that. But right away, it not I, only meant for this game, it was more the, the next game. Right, obviously. His availability for next week, paramount in that conversation. Fair catch made by Bell, and Furman will have the football again. Trailing by 38 on a pleasant Saturday night in Raleigh. All with all four North Carolina schools playing at home. Yeah, Wake at home beating Florida State. Duke at home beating Northwestern. North Carolina at home currently leading Virginia 45-31 in the rivalry that dates back to 1892. And obviously the Wolfpack rekindling this rivalry with Furman that started 119 years ago. Well, when I looked at the schedule, I was like, man, all the schools in this area are That's playing at home. It's a really interesting uh, thought, and, and you're actually getting to see it and, and live it out. Well, our old broadcasting colleague Alex Farmartino is producing tonight in Durham or this afternoon. If he was here, maybe we'd have a different story tonight because Alex was in the producer's chair for two of the three FCS wins over FBS so far this year. He produced the ETSU Vanderbilt game and then he produced the Jacksonville State Florida State wild finish last Saturday at Doe Campbell. He got some excitement in those games, right? <laughs> well, more so last week. ETSU yeah. clobbered Vandy pretty good, 23-3. Yeah. to three, But, I mean, you could be in this business a long time and not get a finish like that one we saw last week in Tallahassee. I don't know if you heard uh, the Florida State radio call at the end of that game. Gene Deckerhoff and William Floyd. <laughs> Did they just throw the... Uh, William Floyd literally, af after yelling, I said, you couldn't let anybody behind you, and then you just hear the headset slammed on the table. I don't remember hearing that. Wow. Well, I'll say this, too, for Furman. You know, Clay Hendricks talked about not, you know, coming out and not playing hard in the second half. I think they, they showed that they were they were able to continue the fight. And they're playing a team that's, a, a, you know, they know what they're up against, but they still just seem to keep battling. Mm -hmm. uh, Furman uh, continuing its possession as the clock ticks toward four minutes to go, but first a quick word from Works. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at MyLandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. So tonight, not how pal the Paladins wanted things to go, obviously, but I'm going to keep an eye on them in the Southern Conference because that it's going to be really interesting. Obviously, it's a good league. Furman was picked third in the preseason SoCon poll. They had a strong 2019 season and then dipped a little bit in this weird, wacky spring kind of players leaving left them with one scholarship quarterback in the spring they ended up playing seven games they go three and four it just didn't feel like a football season even though they were grateful for the opportunity to play and I mean, a lot of people have asked Clay Hendricks about the idea oh, how do you, the, the season the spring the season the fall like, look if we're not playing we're training yeah we'd rather play than train especially since we didn't get to play in the fall so they still had 147 days between the end of the spring and their September 4th opener. They beat Sam Washington's North Carolina A&T Aggie program in Greenville. And that was an impressive win. Sure was. I mean, they played well, and that's an A&T team that's, <laughs> that's really played some good football over the last couple of years. A&T one of the dominant teams in oh, the yeah. MEAC, transferring or shifting into the Big South for the first time this year. Furman will punt one more time. Bayer Thomas and Julian Gray back to receive this punt. And they'll both let it sail inside the 10 and roll to a stop at the 8. A 
Well, I doubt we'll see Dave Doran calling timeouts here down the stretch when the clock's winding down like he did at the end of the first half. I mean, he he really put on the the effort to get that last score of the first half. They were up 38 nothing at halftime. Jumped in front 45 nothing on their first possession in the second half. That made more sense too because what you're trying to do is you don't get a whole lot of two minute war two minute drive opportunities. Uh, I mean, you can practice them, but. It's not quite the same as it would be in game situations, and that, that gave them a chance to work on that with Devin Leary and his, his receivers. Here's Aaron McLaughlin, a guy that NC State diehards are excited about. Let's see if they let him throw it. McLaughlin sure fits the profile. 6'5", 230, originally committed to Auburn before Chang is changing his mind was called by at least some, uh, at least a couple publications, the most important recruit of Dave Doran's class of 2021. A lot of high praise for the young man. And I think when you're building a program, you need to have quarterbacks that can step in and make plays for you. Just throwing this out there. Do you remember what your recruiting ranking was coming out of Texas? We were called blue chippers. And I, I mean, I was probably seventh out of out of a hundred in the state of Texas. You never forget that. I, I, <laughs> I was just setting you up. <laughs> Delbert Mims the third out near the 30. A couple of All-American <laughs> lists. I was pretty highly recruited. How many how many official visits did you take? I took four. I decided not to go on my last one. I went to UCLA, Stanford, Notre Dame, LSU, and was going to go to Miami and decided not to. Picked a pretty good spot. Yeah. And I, I, I learned about UCLA even way before that because I played in a AAU basketball tournament in like the sixth or seventh grade and got on campus and it was just couldn't believe how nice it was. Yep. And I, we had relatives out there, so I'd visit a few summers, but when I got the chance to go back and visit, they were practicing for the Rose Bowl, man, and it was it was a special time. Does not look like McLaughlin's going to get a chance to throw. Delbert Mims the third out to the 37, and that could be the final carry of the day. NC State over 500 yards in total offense with that last tote, and Dave Doran gets his 57th win as the head coach of the Wolfpack. Old Wolfpack grad assistant Clay Hendricks, who's had quite a career as well, suffers his first tobacco road. Oh my, with Chase Freedom Unlimited, I earn all this cash back? Oh, I gotta tell everyone. Hey, Rita, you can earn 3% on dining, including takeout. Bon appetit. Hey, Kim, you earn 5% on travel purchased through Chase. Way ahead of you. Hey, Neil, you can earn 3% at drugstores. Buddy. I'm right here. Why are you yelling? Because that's what I do. You're always earning with 5% cash back on travel purchased through Chase. 3% of drugstores, 3% on dining, including takeout, and 1.5% on everything else you buy. Chase, make more of what's yours. Burger King bans 120 artificial ingredients from its food, so nothing keeps this girl from me or from her impossible Whopper. Okay, maybe these fries. Try the Larissa Machado meal. Food's so real, Burger King had me use my real name for it. Small, a stirring, a feeling, and then it grows until finally it gets so big that feeling becomes a connection. At the National Park Foundation, we call it wonder, and the only thing bigger is our mission to help it thrive. The world has changed. They're coming for you. They're gonna kill you. So the new world can be born. Why? The Last Man. Now streaming. Exclusively, FX on Hulu. The rule in business used to be location, location, location. Now, it's network, network, network. So you need a network that's built right. Verizon Business Unlimited starts with America's most reliable network. Then we have the speed of Verizon 5G. We provide security that's made for business and offer plans as low as $30 per line. More businesses choose Verizon than any other network. Built right for business. We are open and ready for you. 
It's the Labor Day sales event going on all month long at Cunis Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Woodstock. Act now and get 0% APR for 72 months on new Ram trucks. 0% for 72 months. Shop CunisWoodstock.com. Game-changing cardio at a new game-changing price. The original Peloton bike, now $400 less. All access membership separate. 